What is up, everybody? It's Cuber. Uh, pardon me being late with instructions for Diamond 3. I tried to record my desktop one time before, and I got no sound. Then I tried making text instructions, but they weren't really clear enough, so hopefully this will work. Uh, you're going to need Audacity and Sony Vegas in order to do Diamond 3. And I will start with Audacity. So, as I mentioned in the description of the video, the first video that I posted with Diamond 3, the point of Diamond 3 is to have a similar effect to Diamond, but to be a little bit more balanced. And the topmost, the yeah, the topmost track with the highest pitch is going to be quieter, and the bottommost tracks are going to be a little bit louder. Well, the bottom most track is going to be a little bit louder compared to the other one. And I'll get into the detail for that before. After. So first you want to go to File, Import, Audio. And then you find your file. I believe that this is it. This is a good one to start with. Alright, now I record my videos, sorry, I post my videos with 48,000 hertz audio, so I'm going to set the project rate to 48,000 hertz, and I'll resample to 48,000 hertz. This won't make much of a difference, it very slightly increases the quality, but I like to do that just for the consistency. So now what you're going to do is with your track selected, you shrink it and then hit Control D twice. So you have four tracks. Now go to Effect, select the top track, go to Effect, and change the pitch. Now you want to pick a bass pitch shift between 0 and 3 semitones. I usually do 2. But today I'm going to do 1 because that will raise the pitch to B, which is much better in my opinion than C. So you're going to take that number 0 to 3 and add 12 to it. So because I chose 1, I'm going to change the pitch of the first track by 13 semitones. Now I'm going to go to the second one and change the pitch by one semitone or the number that you chose. Change the pitch of this one by the number you chose minus 12. So for me that's minus 11. And for the last one you want to change the pitch by the number minus 24. So for me negative 23. Now here's where Diamond 3 is different from Diamond and Diamond 2 and Standard and 1 because this looks a lot like just Diamond 2 but we're going to change the, the volume of these tracks differently. So select your first track, go to Effect, Normalize and change the volume or Normalize the maximum amplitude to 20 decibel, negative 20 decibels. Geez, I should have written a script for this. Now change the volume of the second one by going to normalize. Change that to negative 8. Whoops. Now for the third one, you normalize to negative 14 decibels. And for the last one you normalize to negative 10.5. This is pretty inflexible. It's not like diamond standard where you can kind of you know mess with it and you can make them make a track a little bit louder if you want or not. I did I actually did some serious math to get these volumes. I did um, amplitude to volume conversions. So this should have a relative amplitude of 
This one will have a relative amplitude of 0.3. This one will have a relative amplitude of 0.2. And this one will have a relative amplitude of 0.1. So to recap, choose your base number n from 0 to 3. Change the pitch of this by n plus 12. And then normalize to negative 20 decibels. This one, change the pitch by n and then normalize to negative 8 decibels. This one, change the pitch by n minus 12 and then normalize to negative 14 decibels. This one, change the pitch to n minus 24 and then normalize to negative 10.5 decibels. Play it to make sure it's not distorted. It shouldn't be distorted. And it's pretty quiet in this video, but I will be posting the result as well. But you'll notice that the top track is not overpowering it anymore, and it's kind of boomy and powerful. And that's the goal of Diamond 3. So we're going to take our tracks, select them all, tracks, mix and render, export, and I'll call it something I can remember. Now this file down here, Warner D3, is actually my first attempt to record this tutorial, which ended up not having sound. I'll just call this Warner, Warner DM3. And .m4a, .aac, they're the same thing, so but you can export it as any file type that you want. You're not constrained to an AAC, but I would suggest using a lossless compression if you're going to use a compression. So like FLAC or AAC, something like that. Otherwise, I'd use an uncompressed file format like, like a wave sound or the Apple interchange file format. All right, we're done in Audacity. Now you're going to go to Sony Vegas. The stuff you do in Sony Vegas is a little bit more flexible, but I will show you what I did for the first video and what I guess I would prefer. So let's go to music, find Warn, Warn R DM3. And we're going to add to the track an effect. So go to track effects down here. You don't need to equalize the track. Now normally I would enhance the track by adding bass, but I've already kind of done that by in Audacity by having those deeper tracks. So I'm going to not bother. I will go to reverb not ExpressFX Reverb, but Reverb for this example. And just use the preset Cathedral. Play that. And now make sure you're looking up here when I play it. So it's still pretty quiet. It doesn't get above negative 4.7 decibels of output. So we're going to raise the volume of the output using this slider, the master bus, by 4.7 decibels so that it matches this. Now, if you use any different audio file, this is going to be different. So don't necessarily change it by 4.7. Change it by, change it so that the maximum volume you get is zero decibels. So let's play it again. There we go. Now sometimes when you do this, you will see the point zero in red. That means that it's clipping a little bit, less than 0.1 decibels. But I would recommend if you do see the point zero in red that you take this down a single tenth of a decibel. So that's the audio. Now, I have gotten a few comments about the video effect, too. 
So I'll be showing you that. The video effect, I don't care what you do. Diamond 3 is the audio effect alone. So you can make it rainbow. I would suggest doing something colorful, but other than that, you can do whatever you want. But I will show you what I did. So let's find, there we go. Get rid of that audio, make sure I got rid of the right one. Yes. I usually pan and crop so that it is 16 by 9 might be a little risky with this one but I'll try it just because I don't have a lot of room uh, all right I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at four by three so I will add my effect by going to media generators and then go to under the all folder you should see test pattern gradient add a gradient go to this gradient keep it at 10 seconds and add an effect channel blend now you'll be in the RGBA space red green blue alpha you want to change that to HSLA hue saturation luminance alpha or, or lightness Go through and put ones in the diagonals just to set it to the default. But what you're going to do, you'll notice this is a little bit different from my first Diamond 3 video. Now you've got this, I'm going to go to the lightness, get rid of the term multiplying itself by the lightness, and add 0.5. So now the brightness of the video is set to 0.5 everywhere. Now go to the hue and multiply that by 2. Now what this has done is not advanced the hue, it has multiplied the hue. So, if, so it takes it as like a scale from red to red. And all the colors go twice as far down that scale. And if they go past the end of the scale, they wrap around. So anything that was, say, cyan would now be red. Anything that was yellow would be green. If I ramp the term up, I can get even more multiplication all the way up to 10. But after a point, it gets kind of ugly looking and pixelated, so I'm going to stick with two. Animate the effect and set the term in the next keyframe at 10 seconds to plus one. Now this is advancing the hue just by one. When you play that, just ignore the sound. So that's your color wheel background. Now we're going to take our source video. I'm going to add to the track the video effects rays. Keep the defaults except for these. Change the amount to 80, the X position to 50, the Y position to 50, the quality to 100 and reduce the flicker. Um, in, for this particular video, I will also add a brightness and contrast effect. But this is not necessary for your video. I'm just doing it to help these edges be more black. And now, set the alpha of this track containing your video which you have dragged above the rainbow difference 
All right. So the only other thing that you need to fix is that you have all this rainbow background over here doing nothing. So you want to take the loop region, drag it to the end of the sound. I just like to capture that little bit at the end of the sound to make sure I've got it all. If you want to, you can scroll to the end of the video instead, which chances are will be slightly shorter than the sound, but I'm going to choose the sound. And then when you render it, you want to make sure that you have render loop region only checked in the render options. That will ignore everything that's not within this loop region. So everything out here will just be chopped off automatically. Lastly, in my case, I will add my channel logo. I won't use my uh, the animated one because this video is so short. I'll put that up there, drag it to the end, set the alpha to difference. Alright, and I'd say that we're ready to go. So I'll save this project as Warnar DM3 and render it. So you will be seeing this rendition of the video on my channel very soon. I hope that these instructions were helpful. A reminder again that the steps that you take in Audacity are not flexible. You should follow them to a T. The steps that you take in Sony Vegas are a little bit more flexible. You can choose between different reverb effects. You can even choose not to have a reverb effect. As for the video, you can do a lot more with the rainbow background than what I just did. You can use something else to add color to it. And have fun using this effect. Be sure to check out my cuberisms and have a good night.